Welcome to the quarantine edition of Abnormal Exchange. Change, change, change. Carol's a bitch. <laughs> prima hola prima damn dude we are quarantined yeah cool we are not together right now but we can see each other we sign up for squadcast right quick because we wanted to do an episode it's just been too long Mm -hmm. and i don't see this ending anytime soon to where we can get together so this is our way of continuing our podcast we'll see how this goes yeah definitely we want we want to be together but it's just we don't have that option right now so this is our option. And it's dope because we can see each other. It's not just like, yeah. you know, just just verbal. It's it's the ne- it's the next best yeah. thing. So here we yes, are. Definitely. We just couldn't let this go. This topic, the Tiger King. Everybody in America and all over the world has watched this fucking what do you docuseries, I guess you would say. Right. Yeah. It is insane. Tiger King. Netflix. OK, so Carol's if a bitch. He- fucking Carol, Carol fucking Baskin. Baskin. <laughs> and it's Baskin, uh, not Baskins. Yeah, with stop. Seriously. It's not Baskins. How did you guys really like that shit? If you didn't watch the Tiger King, I would recommend watching, watching it, it before this. Just because we're when we get into it, it's going to make more sense. Or if you really are here just for the true crime aspect of this, I would suggest watching episode three. Because it'll give you, that's, that's that is the true crime of the whole entire fucking show. (laughs) Yes. And that is actually, how many episodes was there? Seven or uh, eight? Seven, I think. think And yeah, so three is the one that I actually rewatched. That's the one with all of the setup of where we're going to go with this podcast. Oh my God. Joe Exotic was, is a fucking character. Well, the memes are off the chain. Literally the best memes I have seen in ever, ever, ever. Like yeah. in ever. They are the best. I, I didn't want to watch it. I was like, dude, I'm not watching that shit because I saw the promo for it on Netflix. And I was like, dude, no, no. Here's the thing. You don't know what it's about until you watch it. We can't even tell you what it's about because it's literally not even about one thing. And what it is about yeah. is really not able to be explained. You have to experience it. You yes. just And it's also five fucking years of shit. Yeah. You know, made into seven episodes. Five years. Like, what yep. are the odds of this guy starting to create a documentary, docuseries, whatever, and one of the main characters gets fucking knocked for murder, <laughs> for murder to hire. Murder like, for hire, yeah. You understand that guy's like, oh my God, he is literally my golden fucking ticket. This guy's my golden ticket. The main focus of the documentary is actually the feud between Carol and Joe. Yes. They are the two big players in this cat game and throughout the five years that this documentary was filmed the feud between carol and joe just grew and grew and grew i mean it escalated to a point where (laughs) he is now in jail (laughs) for the this alleged murder for hire plot against carol yes which which is is complete bullshit and we know that if you watch it i mean it's so obvious that it it was, it was a all setup. set up without it a It was doubt. a setup from the jump. So, Because the guy that's running his park now, I totally believe was hired by in Carol. In cahoots with, with Carol. Definitely. And, when, and now, what, like what I mentioned with episode three, part of their feud also dealt with That was Joe, Joe's, yeah, that was Joe's like, you know, his fire under his ass that he always threw at her. Was the fact that she had a husband who went missing under extremely mysterious circumstances. He was also a multimillionaire and the, the rumor was that she had him killed and had him fed to her tigers. Yep. So, of course, this is like Joe's biggest thing. He used to have That's like his ammo, dude. That's he made his like ammo. a music video where oh he had God. someone impersonate Carol who was like feeding ground meat to tigers. Was awesome. Oh Fucking my God. Awesome. Like, there was no boundaries with him when it came to Definitely. coming at her if, over if this. You honestly sat back and watched this and didn't know anything about anything, didn't weren't on social media, and you watched this, you would seriously think that it was fake, like it was made up. Because it absolutely doesn't you, look real. <laughs> you're like, there is no way possible that, that all these this people is real. exist. Yeah, like these people exactly like these people are fucking real. They're not characters that somebody like, you know, uh, wrote up and and assigned yeah. a script to. No fucking way. Yeah. I know these so people to, are dead serious. Like this is happening right now. Like, wow. Yeah. So to summarize exactly where it came to a head was, you know, she's trying to shut down Joe left and right. This is how he makes his money. This is his passion. No matter what he says, in his mind, he loved 
these tigers and like this was his life and she was trying to shut him down and block him from doing shows and block him from doing anything really and so now they're going back and forth at each other he's constantly bringing up her husband that went missing and now he's making fun of her organization big cat rescue and he makes a a kind of like a mockery of it, yeah. Kind of utilizing their logo, and she comes after him legally for the copyright. That's where he and fucked up. That's where he yes, fucked up. Big this time. is where he. This is where he really fucked up because she won a million dollar settlement against him. Yep. So really, a lot of people were like, "Well, it was just to make a point. She won the settlement, whatever." No, but she started coming after him for that money. Yep. Claiming his properties, she went after his mother. Yep. Now yep. he's pissed. So now he had this like internet show where he had like a um like a dummy that. He like was like, this is Carol Baskin. He like shot the head off the dummy <laughs> like, the <laughs> on his live internet show. I mean, he they were I'm going ahead in here. I'm gonna put her mm-hmm. head in this jar. Carol fucking Baskin's head's gonna yep. be in this jar. Like that bitch. That bitch. Oh my god, yo, he is honestly, he is not a good person, but I fucking love him. He's hilarious. Joe oh is fucking hilarious. Without and you know what? And now, so so he, now we get to the part. The next thing you know, he's set up and he's now in jail for the murder for hire, alleged. And they also nailed him with some animal cruelty charges, which, yes, like I you said yesterday, what's yeah. right is right. That he should be held accountable for, but those and other charges are complete hire. bullshit. Yep. Yep. And 100%. you can watch the documentary and make your own decision on that because we want to kind of do a record scratch and rewind. Like, hold up. She actually had yeah. a husband that went missing. Yeah. Because now it's like, okay, wait, hold up. This is entertaining, right? But we're done. Now we're done. We have nothing else to watch. We have nothing else to do. We're fucking quarantined. Hold the fuck up. She really does have a husband missing. And then you start digging into this and you're like, holy shit. And this is this a story is where up. the rabbit hole goes deep Damn, with dude. this one. Episode three is where this story comes into play, but they kind of like bring it up and then they move on because it yes. really was the Tiger King documentary, not yes. the Carol Baskin killed her husband documentary. Yeah. And so or we're grabbing su- information. Supposedly. So we're grabbing information from it. That's the most important, which is right. episode three. And now this kind of led us to our tangent. And let me just say something really quick too, because I was saying this before we started. The Don't Fuck With Cats documentary kind of launched this whole world of internet sleuthing. That case was solved by people in a Facebook group. Yeah, our our chair detectives. Bro, this was us. We've been we've been ready for this our whole lives with our little notebooks when we were kids, like writing down everything, being detectives, you know, snooping, like we were ready for this. Okay. What is there? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there is a group on Facebook right now that is dead ass serious, badass internet sleuthing, and they are coming up and they are digging up the most awesome, shit. crazy yeah. shit and evidence on this case. I've, I've so, just glanced at the group because you're the one who who sent me to the group, right? And it's like, whoa, these people are all—they are literally like a bunch of my cousins all together. Kim is awesome with shit like that. She's very good with with. I, I honestly, this podcast would not happen if it wasn't for her because that's not true. That's not true. This is both of us. I'm dude, not putting this in there. I'm dude, not putting this. Fuck in there. that. Don't listen to her. She doesn't know what she's talking about because if it wasn't for her, <clears throat> social media, all that shit would not happen because I'm a lazy motherfucker. That's not true. You <laughs> sent me stuff too, and then that sends a different hallway down the, the rabbit hole. You. It's a different. That's a different exit off the the rabbit hole. <laughs> but we need all of the exits because yes. they all somehow tie together, and literally, there is no linear way to kind of set up this story so we're just going to start it from right into it by, by we're carol jump right into right? It. we'll go into a little bit of uh, um, background about carol because carol you have to understand a lot of the accounts of her life and the things that happened to her are based off of her words yes so and you have she to she kept she kept diaries and she actually even has her own youtube channel even now that she's currently yeah. posting to that she's reading diary entries and going through her life and it's kind of wild and you ha- also have to take it with a grain of salt yes, because, because no matter diary. whether no matter whether you think she's telling the truth or lying anyone that tells a story is telling their side of it they're yeah. telling their perspective there's three sides to a story your side their side and the truth okay yes. so obviously her stories come with her emotions her perspective and what she wants to admit and what she kind of wants you to believe no matter what you think of her yeah and you read between the lines like some of her diary shit you're like wow because if you just sit there and listen to her diaries and that's it you're like oh okay this girl went through so much stuff but if you yeah. read between the lines this girl is a really sadistic person yeah. and she's kind of a whore a little bit yeah. 
a little, little bit, bit. <laughs> our opinions but yes our opinions i digress let's start let's start from the beginning so she was born and raised in in texas from what yep. we know she was born on an air force base uh 1961 uh june 6th she was born so from what we've looked into she only has one sibling and that's chuck and he's seven years younger than her and her family kind of hopped around a lot they moved like all over the country from from Texas to Florida, from Florida to West Virginia, from West Virginia to Florida. Like they, they they hopped around a lot in Florida. It wasn't for like that he was in the military and he had to do this. It was just more or less like wherever work was. And well, from what I read, he ended up having jobs where he worked for multiple governors of the state of Texas. So that's cool. That's cool. That's cool but that also kind of sets up her family a for a little bit of a connection later yes, on. Exactly. So and that's what that's a lot to do with her. She has yeah. a lot of connections. That's why she kind of put shit under the rug a little bit. You know, she pays the right politicians and and that's what it's about. I'm sorry. If you don't think so, you're living in a fucking in another world because that's that's what it's really about. You you pay the right politician and you could kind of do whatever the fuck you want to at a certain extent. You know? Yeah. She claims she had a very abusive childhood in a lot of ways, too. She claims a lot of weird things went on in her family with her mother and her grandmother. And she wasn't happy at home. I know she tried to leave home several times when she was 15. She ran off with a guy named yes. Don. Not the Don that's missing, a different Don. She Call actually refers, she, yeah, yep. she refers to him as Jim in Which her is stories. Funny because this, this is very like, believe it or not, nobody really knows about this. A couple people were saying this, like, oh, she was married three times, and then you're like, oh yeah, well, well duh. we don't know if she if she married. So yeah, here's we don't the know story: if she's married. She was this ever married guy, to him. This guy's name was Donald, quote unquote, Jim Jones. Okay. <laughs> So Don Jim Jones, we're just going to call him Jim because yeah, Don is Don. Yeah, right. Can't so Don. we'll call him Jim. So Carol was very young. She was 15 and Jim was in the army and he went AWOL in the army and she decided that she wanted to leave home and she was a, kind of afraid of him because she said he was abusive. This is yeah, a pattern. Did, did You're going to hear this a lot. He, he Everybody drugs. that she's with yeah. was abusive. So, oh yeah, she's like literally the victim consistently, like. You don't think that's weird? Like every person you're with is is beating the crap out of you and like doing this and doing that. But whatever know, it was, it was better than her life at home. So she decides she wants to run away with him, but she's kind of like worried about going off with him. So she convinces him to move to Florida to live with his family in Florida. Yes. She runs off with him. He's AWOL now. They're on their way to Florida. She said she was driving and they get into this accident where she ran a stop sign and they got macked by a big car. And she said she was driving a little car. She went through the windshield, she says, and ended up paralyzed from the waist down. That's crazy. Because in her diary, she says nothing about this whatsoever. She no, but in other places, she accounts yeah, yeah, for yeah. this. Because she, but, there's but actually she an takes, interview. So she you can actually hear this. And puts whatever she wants in her story. You know what I mean? Like this is your diary. Like that's right. a big thing that happened, dude. Like you're you're fucking paralyzed. But there are actually interviews with her telling this story. Yeah. It's not no, like, exactly. It's, it's not, not like, like it was it's somebody bullshit. wrote it. It's yeah. she t told the story in her but own. That's voice. what I'm saying. Like this is your diary, and you're you're like telling people like the most you know craziest things that happened yeah. to you, and going year by year. You wouldn't include that that you were fucking paralyzed. I just yeah. I just find how she picks and chooses what she wants right. to put out there because to her she doesn't talk anything about like on her youtube you know yeah she doesn't talk anything about the accident she just says that she tried to go to her parents house to i mean to his parents house and then from his parents house they went right to maryland to turn him in she says that they went to florida they were at his parents house and mm -hmm. she was there paralyzed trying to recover and somehow her grandfather located her because she had ran away from home. Okay. And now her family is looking for her. And somehow the grandfather finds her in Florida at Jim's house. Jim's parents' and, house, yeah. And he makes her leave and they take her to some chiropractor. And she says this chiropractor was magic and helped her heal her <laughs> her paralysis. Okay. Cool. Great. Awesome. But other than that, there is literally no other information that has ever come out about this guy, Jim. She, it, There is a published newspaper article that has yeah. her listed. It has her photo and it says she's 15 years old and her name is Carol Jones and it shows her working someplace. It says, Carol, who recently came to Charleston from Tampa, Florida, has been married for five months. Her Charleston. husband, a welder, is presently unemployed. If people say I need this job less than others, they are wrong, she said. I'm supporting my family in a way. I'm just like a number of others who work for the state. It's not unusual. And it basically says she works at the Capitol building, I guess. So Charleston, that's in South Charleston. Carolina. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah. So that, I just find that so weird because 
like I said, when you were going down the rabbit hole and digging through, you know, archives of information and shit, I was watching all her videos, right? Trying to see like where she went, what she's saying, like I said, which is, we don't know how much is true, right? right? She talks about Jim. She does talk about him very little amount. Basically, all she says is that she, she doesn't say how refers they met. To him, no, she refers to him as a boyfriend, but then lists all of her previous last names yeah. and Jones is one of them. One so of them. here's what I'm thinking. She was 15. Yeah, I don't either, think they yeah. Either they got married and she lied about her age, but there would be marriage papers and there's not. Yes. Um, there's literally nothing about this. Nothing whatsoever. Okay. No. Or she was just 15 and since she was a minor, she says, well, let's just say we're married and I'll use the name Carol Jones. And that way, if anyone asks, like we're married and that's why we're together. Exactly. And it was kind of like, it was kind of like their story. But other than that, literally this guy does not exist. You can't find anything and they on had him. And been together for a good amount of time because from like her dates. Now, again, this is her. Okay. We have no documentation besides her what she's saying so we don't know how much is true but they had to be together for a good time because now she's saying that they went from her from um she had the car accident she was staying at his parents house her grandfather fought you know found her and you know brought her back to walking back to life and you know and and then from there they went to to maryland to turn him in he chickened out didn't turn in and then they stood in maryland and she worked all these odd jobs and then eventually somehow she went from maryland to South Carolina. So I'm not sure who she was living with in in South Carolina, but either way, she ended up getting a job. Her relationship with Jim ended. I don't know where he went. Maybe he moved away. Maybe he took on another identity because he was AWOL, but she ended up getting a job at a department store. And that is where Mm -hmm. she met a man named Mike Murdoch. Now, where did she she meet Mike in Florida, right? Yes. He he was, he worked at a department store and she got a job there. And I think her manager, right? He was her manager. Mm -hmm. And they started a relationship. And of course, this was another abusive relationship, according to her. And of course, of course, they well, end up getting married in her diary with Jim. Right. She literally says that like he beat the crap out of her. She had to work like three and four jobs a day. She was working all these different jobs until they found out that she was, you know, 15 and they would you know, fire her and stuff like that. And that they were living in somebody's house, um, a gay person's house. And the gay person would say, you know, you need to leave him. What are you doing with him? And this is goes to show you this person's character because I thought it was actually hilarious because she said that throughout this time, she's never tried drugs, okay? She's never tried drugs. Even though her boyfriend at the time is a serious drug addict, you know, doing all different types of drugs. So one right. night, the person that she lives with, um, the gay guy, she wants to smoke a cigarette because she knows she smokes cigarettes once in a while. So she asked him if she can have one of his cigarettes. So when she grabbed his cigarette pack, She saw a couple cigarettes that were rolled up and she said she didn't want to take the good ones. So she grabbed ones that looked kind of shitty. Right. And she took the shitty one and started smoking it. And all of a sudden the um, napkins on the floor turned into fucking dinosaurs. So I'm like, oh, shit, she just smoked some PCP or, you know, or took some ass. I don't know, like something laced. No, it was just weed, dude. What okay, weed are Carol. you fucking smoking? Because that just goes to show you the type of person that you're dealing with. That she takes this little bit and brings it Makes out to it something. into a big thing. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so, Carol. Yeah. Seriously. So that, that's what I thought was really funny when she said that. I told my cousin, I was like, this is the person we're dealing with. You know what I mean? This is the person. So she meets Mike at the department store. He's her boss. They start a relationship. They eventually end up getting married. But she claims he was abusive, controlling, the Another whole one. thing. Another one. Yeah. The same old, same old. She's the victim. He's a bad guy. But they have a kid together. A kid that she doesn't want. A kid that she doesn't want. So much so that when she was pregnant, and she says this story in her own words on her YouTube channel. It's not speculation or anything like that. This is her words. She didn't want the pregnancy. She tried to end the pregnancy. She knew that Mike wouldn't allow her to get an abortion. And she tried hurting herself. She tried drinking. She tried starving herself. You need permission of your husband to get an abortion. Or parents. And she wasn't going to get either. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, she was, you know, drink. She actually, she was drinking and starving herself. She actually had like a moving company um, that her family gave to her. And she was like moving heavy objects all by herself. And like people would ask, oh, we'll help you. And she'd be like, no, because she purposely wanted to have a miscarriage right uh then eventually she said that mike kind of like left her in the bathroom to kind of dry out so to speak because she was an alcoholic by the time she was 16 she was a straight up alcoholic bad and this is her words so then she dries out but she still didn't want the baby but it didn't work so she ends up having a baby so they had their daughter jamie jamie's born july 16th 1980 
And then about a year later, I guess the 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 marriage still wasn't still going rocky. well. Yes, yeah, still, still going rocky. Great. She says they're fighting all the time, and so she was spending a lot of time out of the house. She was leaving her daughter at home with Mike to yeah. go out and be out of the house a lot. She says she was staying in her van a lot, things like that. So. Not being now, a mom, he, not being this perfect mom yeah. that she describes herself to be. So here's where her story, you can already start to see some discrepancies. Yeah. In her divorce papers with Mike, because spoiler alert, they end up getting divorced. <laughs> um, she says that she met Don Lewis during her time working in real estate while she was still married to Mike and they formed an attraction and got yeah, together. She, lied. she straight up lied. In the Tiger King documentary, she states that one night after a fight with Mike, she decides to take a walk down Nebraska, Nebraska. Ave in yeah. Tampa. And uh, there a man pulls up next to her and rolls down his window and says, hey, I really need someone to talk to. Why don't you get in? And she says, no. And he says, oh, please, you know, I want, you know, I just <laughs> please, want someone I to talk. Want I really, talk to I need really need someone to talk to. So she says, friend. he says, I even have a gun. You can hold on to it while we drive around That's and talk. That's not weird. So she says, okay. So she gets into the car with him. She says she's holding a gun. She said she never she pointed. I know. Yeah. She never. She never pointed it at him, but she was holding on difference. to it. I know. And eventually, he decides that he's going to park and talk with her. And they ended up connecting, and they ended up spending the night together. But they didn't um, have sex though, even though they no. went to the shittiest motel yeah. in the area. And oh, FYI, Nebraska. Apparently, we found out. Nebraska, Nebraska Ave. Avenue is like prostitute central and she's just walking down barefoot having a stroll like the way she makes it state was like she's walking down like the nicest area uh, of, of yeah. Tampa and she's just going for a nice little stroll no it's like the hood and it's like prostitute central and we also find out later on that Don supposedly is addicted to sex and has yeah. like problem with women you probably thought she was a um, prostitute dude let's be real or he was out Maybe he was out looking for prostitutes. That's what I'm maybe that's maybe what I'm she she could have also been a prostitute. <laughs> exactly. And that's a big theory that she was kind of doing that to make money on the side because I hired her ass. Don't front, bitch. Don't front. Yeah, she, she, she definitely got paid. <laughs> exactly. But either way, she lied, right? So yeah. there's one, lie number one that's documented is that in the divorce papers, she says she met Don this way. In the in the um, documentary, she says she met Don. Walking down the street. Yep. And she Either even way, says that in her diary. So it just goes to show you the bitch. She falls in nice. love with Don. And, you know, she loves the fact that Don is a millionaire. And but he lies to her first, though, right? Remember? He lied to her first and said that he had a different, he, he called himself Bob Martin. Martin. Bob mm -hmm. Martin. And tried to say that, kind of find out after all this shit, she finds out his name is Don and he's fucking rich. And yeah. He's like, oh, I just wanted to make sure that you love me for me. <laughs> right. But. So then I'm thinking she, she loved him a little bit more. But so they carried on for a few years, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, about four more years because Don was also married and had yep. children and things like that. So they didn't just like run off and get together. They carried on a relationship for a few years until they both and eventually left their marriages to get together with each other. And she did some and, shaky shit. Like she would hide, you know, like when they would go to his uh, workplace or whatever, because he had like a bunch of trailers on this property he owned. And she would like hide on the floor so no one could see see them so she knew what she was doing was wrong you right. know what i mean she yeah. was definitely the side piece but she wasn't the only one and she thought she fucking was but yeah he was doing other guys too yeah she wasn't miss uh she had a list she literally had a list of all the guys she was messing with like that's something not to be proud of dude in between don and i mean uh mike and don she had all these guys that she listed that she was fucking with yeah oh yeah one of them was multiple. her cousin remember yeah. one of them was her cousin oh my god isn't that awesome her second cousin who she was fucking with. That's awesome. So proud. Let's let's be proud of fucking with our second cousin, dude. Fuck cool, that. Carol. So anyways, keep going. <laughs> so cool, Carol. Somewhere, somewhere fucking in Carol here, Baskin. Fucking Carol Baskin, that bitch. Um, <laughs> somewhere bitch. in here, there's a, another car accident. I don't know. This car accident left her oh, with yeah. amnesia. Yeah. This was a right around this time because oh, it was bef it was before she files for divorce with Mike and the, and their marriage is over. I'm not Jamie's really sure. A years old at this point. Jamie's a she couple says, years old at this like, point. Yes. Yeah. And she gets into a car accident and has amnesia. I don't really know how this gets resolved or what was the point of it. But no, there's not she says this happened to her. Okay. Which is probably cool, bullshit. Carol. Again, the amnesia, I guess, miraculously went away. Whatever. Yeah. She divide she files. And she for even a divorce. says in her diaries, there's like pictures and she's like, I don't remember that. I don't remember this time or this and that. And it's like convenient. So fake. So yeah. exactly. Very convenient. So she files for a divorce from Mike in nineteen eighty six and it's finalized in nineteen eighty seven. Then in she the starts divorce, seeing 
what happens? What happens though in the divorce? What happens? Oh, so she, let's she gets fucking let me back custody. up for a second. Let me back up for a yeah, second yeah. because she actually that, that just goes to show you if a judge agrees. Come on, dude. Come on. So if you go and watch her um, YouTube videos that account for her life during this time, she has a video where she talks about Mike kidnapping Jamie. When her mother had Jamie and her mother was at the grocery store and Jamie was little, she says that Mike came up to her mom in the grocery store and attacked her and took Jamie and ran off. And she didn't know where Jamie was for a I'm few sure years until Mike registered her for kindergarten. So no way, I didn't someone know that. Ki- so someone kidnaps your kid. There's no police report on it. There's no 911 call. There's no arrest. There's no charges. There's no nothing. Come on, dude. Oh my Carol God. Baskin. Thank God that was her husband. You know what I mean? Like, what if it wasn't her husband that kidnapped her kid? Like, you didn't do anything about it? No, because they knew that it was Mike. But exactly. the point was, the point was, she is that it wasn't it true. Bigger. It wasn't true yeah. because no, exactly. it was never true. It never happened because she was deemed to have left her daughter with Mike. Not only did her daughter in the in the court documents, their divorce papers say this: they denied Carol's claim for alimony. They awarded custody of Jamie to Mike. They said that Jamie wanted to live with Mike. On top of that, they felt like Jamie would be safer with Mike because she was being subjected to a- abuse and sexual misconduct. Basically, Meaning Carol's she's sleeping whore. around. Yeah, she's exactly. like, she, she a hoe. Do you know how hard it is, especially in the 80s? Oh my God, for a to dad to be awarded. A yes. Exactly. It does not, it's like yeah. very, very rare. So, And also, it also shows those claims of Mike kidnapping Jamie were completely false and just another way for her to try to look like a victim and have people feel bad exactly. for her or whatever. Exactly. So yep. the divorce was finalized. Mike gets custody of Jamie. She's actually supposed to pay him child support. And this is yeah, all like in, seven their, something a month. in their divorce papers. And it a also lot. says the court documents like that she... they. It literally says, calls her a liar. They say in the court papers, you know, we've the, the court has found for you to be dishonest on multiple accounts throughout this wow. proceedings. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. So then for them Carol to gets back. Be- fucking liar. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're a fucking liar, Carol Baskin. So divorce is finalized. <laughs> she's got Don on the, on the back burner here, right? That's like, she's got him kind of like in the wings waiting, but she still, I guess, goes around and starts messing around with some doctor. We don't really know much yeah, about Dr. him F. other than Dr. F. Yeah. This is her claim. She's seeing this doctor on and off. And people did actually mention that there yeah. was a doctor that she was seeing and there was multiple men that she was seeing Geologist besides Don. Something like that, if I'm not, something if like I'm not that. mistaken. While yeah, still but there on was and a off. a lot of other guys. Yes. While yeah. still on and off with Don. So in 1990, Don divorces his wife. Now him and Carol are together. Okay, they move in yep. and they get married in 1991. Their marriage, of course, is rocky. She claims yep. he's controlling. She claims he's abusive. She claims that, you know, he basically he's doesn't allow that, but she's perfect. He's not, yeah, she's perfect. he doesn't allow her to do certain things. He gets mad when she wants to do things for Jamie. He gets mad when she wants to do things for herself. But they carry on business together. They yeah. start collecting real cats. estate. Yeah. Yeah. They start yes. collecting and the cats and, and breeding the cats. The cats thing is she says she's been a cat lover, right? Her whole life an animal lover. But yet she's never once owned any type of big cat or anything like that until dawn right? right look it up she's never once owned any type of big cat or even yeah this was to, something that they started it. together so carol and don founded wildlife on easy street this is where they would purchase cats breed cats yeah and mostly breeding that was like their yeah, huge that thing. was their big thing he was very into this so much so that he started acquiring land in costa rica because yeah. there was less regulations in costa rica so he with the money that they, and that they had multiple businesses they were into real estate state they were big loan sharks i mean they had they had a lot of shiesty shit yeah dude. a lot of shiesty shit they definitely were the type that they they preyed on the misfortunes of other people yeah, with these loans and real estate they had a whole thing okay so he's using this money and he's purchasing land and looking to purchase land in costa rica because there's less regulations there as far as breeding the big cats and things like that Didn't so he own a property I think he did. And I think it was like 200 acres that he he secured in Costa Rica because he wanted to basically move out there. Yeah, definitely. At least for most of the year and live out there. He wanted to leave Carol fucking bad. He wanted to leave Carol. (laughs) She claims he actually went out there about once a month. Every time she was on her cycle, he would go out to Costa Rica to kind of like. So addicted to sex. Yeah. And he would just like meet girls. And also there was claims that he was funneling money over there. Yeah. A lot. I heard with the with the mafia out there, the supposed mafia. He was dealing out yeah, with some shady characters, some kind of Costa Rican mafia. This is a claim of Carol's. It's However, exactly. again, 
and a claim of Carol. So we don't really... There are documents yeah. stating, and even his secretary, now he has a secretary named Anne McQueen. And Anne is supposedly the closest person to Don. Yes. And she always says, oh, I'm the only woman that he never hit on. I don't know how true that is. I don't know if she had feelings for him. I don't know she if said there she was... was short, fat, and stubby. So that's why he didn't hit on her. In right. But thing. he trusted her. He no, trusted her yeah. to the point where she was on his life insurance yeah. policy. So... She was executor of his wills. She did say, yes, he would go out to Costa Rica. He did b- purchase property. He actually went out there regularly. Apparently, he had a um, a pilot's license that he lost after, after crashing several small planes. He literally crashed three planes. How do you, like, like, how, how do you, do you <laughs> crash three planes? Like, it's nothing. Like, oh, oh So well. he, he <laughs> lost his pilot's license because of this. The first day he got it, supposedly, right? Yeah. Like, the first day he got his fucking pilot's license, he lost it because of the dangerous, like, the way he was, you know, uh, uh, driving the plane. It was, yeah. it was super dangerous. <laughs> so that didn't stop him. Apparently, he flew under the radar. And I do believe this because this oh, was I pre, pre- yeah. 9-11. It was very, probably very easy to – he knew if he flew at a certain altitude that radar wouldn't pick him up. So he exactly. would literally fly under the radar on, in his own planes yeah. and things like that. And so I totally believe that, especially with those airports around there that were like in the middle of nowhere, those smaller airports. Small I mean, airports. Oh, for sure. Yeah. There was like there a dime a dozen out there, you know? Yeah. So – and it was also said during this time he started funneling money over to Costa Rica to use in the future. I don't know how true that is. And says it's not true, but apparently she was the one helping him funnel the money. Mm. And yeah, this was their business, the, the cat thing. Throughout all of the, of the years, whatever businesses that they were doing and whatever money that they were making, she claims that he was very controlling over it and she really didn't have much say in anything really. Yeah. So of course- their marriage is very rocky to the point where she kicks having him out. Time. Right? Yeah, or, they're, having a, they're having a rough time. When did she start? This was when she started selling his stuff. So it got to the point where she was selling his things. Yeah, well, she said every time he would leave to Costa Rica, she would sell his things. That's yeah. what she said because there was just junk everywhere, supposedly. Okay. We don't right. know how true that is. He we collected. Know that she, yeah. He collected a lot of shit, but some of the stuff he yeah. collected was was worth money. Okay. Some of it was worth a lot of fucking money. So I highly doubt you would give away very expensive things. You know what I mean? So he would come he would come home from Costa Rica and then they would get in fights about her selling his stuff. And someone told him, Well, you know, you should just get a restraining order against her then because they were fighting about it so bad and she was kicking him out. And so he did. In nineteen ninety seven, he went and filed a restraining order against her, basically saying that she was threatening his life and that she took his guns and um she like is that the truth though? I mean, what if what if he wasn't taking it? She wasn't taking any of his stuff. What if she really really did try to threaten his life. He files this order of protection against her. This is what he wrote on it. This is the second time Carol has gotten angry enough to threaten to kill me. I was away from our house. She gave two junk men permission to come on property and remove trucks and equipment that I had stored there that a man owed me $17,000 on. When I found out the man that owned the equipment had to call the sheriff to make them stop when I got back, me and Carol got into a big fuss. She ordered me to get out of the house or she would kill me if I came back. Oh, she, she I has read this whole thing. Shit. Yep, she has a she has a 45 revolver and she took my 357 and hit it. I have owned this home 17 years. We have only lived there 3 years together. I have a lot of equipment and animals and cats there. I wonder I why the judge ha- He says he it. then he says I have 132 exotic cats that I take care of. Okay. So that's why that's why the judge didn't grant him. They it sounded like they just got into a little quarrel. Right. You know well, what he, I mean? He says this is the second time she threatened to kill me. Yeah. But yes, after 5 days the court said we're denying this request for order of protection because I guess they just didn't see merit in it. You know, exactly. maybe yeah. they're saying, okay, here's a man. It's his house. You guys are married. So he was denied and they continued living together after that. And this is where it starts to get kind of weird. And that was in June, correct? That was it. That of was 97. in June of 97. Yes. The same year he disappeared. The same year, well, cup a month and a half month or so half. before yeah. he disappeared. Fucking A, right? Yeah. I guess things still weren't good around this time. So now he gets denied the order of protection. He goes back and he starts telling family and friends about him wanting to divorce yeah, Carol. He wants it to be over with. That he even mentioned to a couple people that he was in fear for his life. Yes. Like and his daughters. Remember, his daughters said that. His daughters said that. Even and the supposedly secret- he wasn't talking to his daughters. That's what Carol said. But well, yeah, that's how would what they Carol know that? Said, but exactly. How would they know that? He had to have been in contact with them somehow because exactly. they knew a lot of the things that were going on then yep. anyway. Yep. So he goes back to this his secretary that he trusted McQueen. and he he comes in one day with an envelope and he says, "I want you to take this envelope and put it away and if anything happens to me, open it." Yes. 
That's okay. crazy, right? And like then he disappears a month and a half later. A month like, and a half later on on August 18th, he was actually reported missing. On the 17th, supposedly she said the last time she saw him was August 18th, right? But then we found out some information recently about this lady named Patricia Payne, Kenny Farr's ex-wife. And Kenny Farr was Don's right-hand man, his maintenance guy, somebody who he supposedly trusted, trusted as well. Exactly, yeah. very much so. His wife, Patricia, says that on the 17th, which was a Sunday, he comes home with all this stuff of Don's. And it's not just junk that she normally gave away. It was some really expensive things, some um, really expensive guns. I don't know exactly. I did hear that it, some of them were uh, like Civil War guns or World War One, something, you know, expensive guns that would have, that would not be junk. And she says, well, why did, you know, why do you have all of Don's things? And she said, he said, you know, shut, shut your mouth, mind your business. And she's like, this, what's going on? Something doesn't make sense. Oh, he goes, all I know is Carol gave me a bunch of his stuff. Mind your business and shut up. So she's like, Okay, that's weird. And then the next thing she finds out that Don's missing. Right. So right, exactly. That's weird. So here's how this whole thing went down. Now, Kenny in the documentary says that everybody knew Don was getting ready to send a bunch of stuff out to Costa Rica. He actually yeah. was uh, taking some stuff down to Miami, like trucks and things like that to put on a barge. And then he was going to fly down to Costa Rica and the stuff was going to go on the barge from Miami to Costa Rica. And he was going to fly down to Costa Rica and apparently like set all this up because this was more of him trying to like move some of Everything his life there. down there. Yeah, exactly. He's getting the van ready to bring stuff down to Miami or whatever. And he has Kenny helping him. And in the documentary, see, Kenny is in the documentary a few times. We don't hear much from him after the documentary. All of the people that were a part of this documentary have been doing shows and interviews yep, and they're all speaking out. In, dude. Kenny has been quiet, but in the documentary, he's interviewed and Kenny says, so I'm working on the van with Don and he comes out of nowhere and says, you know, if I pull this off, it'll be the slickest thing I ever did in my life. And then the phone and rang it. and- and, and Don had to go get the phone and he said, that's the last thing Don ever said to me. And he says this twice, that quote, if I, if I pull this off, it'll be the slickest thing I ever did in my life. What was the context of that conversation? Exactly. What, was being, what were you, you talking about? You just came out of nowhere before? and said that? Like, like what? That doesn't so, make sense. That's bullshit. Right. Bullshit. So it seems very like, almost like he was Set making up. it a point to, to state yes. that and like, oh, he was planning something. The he's deal trying was, to make it seem like he's alive right. and he's out there. And you during know the I mean? time when Fuck Carol was interviewed, Carol's account is that Don told her, oh, we got to get up early, early, early because I'm- She specifically said, said early, early, early in early, the early, interview early. Yes. everywhere. Mm -hmm. What? And when she says early, 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 do you see her eyes? What she does? Like She laughs a lot during this oh account. God. Like there's Weird a couple times where- you, and, you, and if you hear her talking about it, it's just so strange. Like, yes. oh, Don wanted to get up early, early, early to, to get ready to leave for Miami and you know Kenny was supposed to drive him to the airport or whatever and it's just the whole thing was just so strange and we can't um, take Kenny as serious we we cannot believe what he's saying because his whole character went out the window when he said that he no longer worked there when Don disappeared she fired everybody which is bullshit because Kenny she fired there she fired everybody except for Kenny except for Kenny After so Kenny tried missing. to sit there and say that he was no longer working there but he was he was for some for some time he had definitely yeah. was yeah mm -hmm. so kenny was supposed to take him to the airport he told carol that he wanted to leave early 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 and <laughs> yet that same morning on the 18th at 3 a.m she was broken down on the side of the road which makes no sense which makes no sense she states she had gone out at 3 a.m to a 24-hour pet store called albertson's to get milk for some of the cats yeah, and her, her van broke down and she's just walking down the road and she just happens to run into her brother who works for the sheriff's office of Hillsborough County. Hillsborough County, yes. Just happens to see her walking down the highway. Right. But come on, are you fucking kidding So he, he sends his deputy to drive her home and I guess he helped deal with the van. That was that. Nothing else has come of that. No one else thought that was weird. No one else looked into that. Was there actually an Albertson actual car? on that road? Was there actual a car? I mean. I don't know. But she was definitely out at 3 a.m. And that was – they was never made into a big deal. No, later and there was on, speculation that that supposed cat store wasn't 24 hours. I don't know how true that is. Or if it was 24 hours, it wasn't at that time or yes. who knows. I think but that's no what one, they said. Like that – it was there, but it wasn't 24 hours. No one really made like a big that. deal out about this because yeah. she said she went back home and then a few hours later was the last time that she saw Don that same morning. You don't think so that's weird? 
3 a.m. She's out and about. She comes home, says that was the last time she saw Don. No one else saw Don then. She saw Don. Only her. A- and Kenny. Exactly. And Kenny. And Kenny. It just doesn't even make any sense. No, it doesn't. It but doesn't yet Kenny, sa- Kenny says the last thing that Don said to him was, this will be the slickest thing I ever pull off. And there was no other context to the conversation. It makes it just, no sense it's not, it's not adding up. No. So either way. It's uh, all bullshit. The- it's all lies. All of it does not make right. sense. What makes sense. That's, and we're not sitting here saying we're leaving stuff out. No, this is exactly what happened. And it doesn't make sense. Because if you're sitting here going, wait, maybe you guys left some stuff out. No, this is exactly what happened. So that's why it's not making sense at all. So the secretary, Anne. She's that day trying to call Don because she knew he was getting ready to make a trip to Costa Rica, but he, was he also to drop off some signs, s- some realtor signs, and yeah. she was trying to call him. And she said he was very big with the phone and the pager. Yes, and they had they had a code. Their code was seven one one. So after not being able to reach him for a while, she started to actually get worried. Like, what is going on here? She texts or pages him the code 711 which means call me emergency call me right yeah, away an emergency he, he doesn't call back she's kind of freaking out the next morning well, wait, she hold call- up. didn't didn't uh sorry to interrupt but didn't she the the signs that were supposed to be dropped off at the house weren't they just left there they were left outside the realtor's office office outside but no one yes, saw don nobody saw who it right. was so that's to me that's a little weird you but know but they I mean? had other business to attend to and that's why she was trying to reach don but yes. he wasn't returning her phone call so like i said she tries paging him he the their 911 code which was 711 he's still not responding so the next morning she reaches out to carol and says hey i haven't heard from don like you know have you, what's, you, know? Have yeah. you? Yeah. and so she laughs and literally when she's telling this story in her own words, she actually laughs like, oh, like, I didn't hear from Don. Like, OK, like, that's Don. Like, yeah, whatever. That's Don. Knowing <laughs> even now when you're retelling the story that he was missing, you're laughing in that moment. Yeah, it just it just seems off. So anyway, so sh- she laughed it off like, oh, God, that's Don. Like, no, I didn't hear from him. Like, that's not not surprising to me. And even people said, like, yes, he may have ignored Carol's phone calls, but he but wouldn't have ignored McQueen. Anne's. No, not McQueen's. Nope. So now she's freaking out. So it wasn't until the next day that Carol actually went down and filled out a missing persons report yes so now you're talking what uh three days if you count when she says she last saw him which she says she saw him on the morning of the 18th and then it was that whole day and was tell her no go file a a missing report because she mcqueen actually had to tell her like no you need to go file Right. So the, you, oh, do you think I should? Like, what the fuck do you mean? Yeah. Oh, you think that's important? So the, so it really wasn't – it sounds like a long time, but it was because it was early in the morning that Carol claimed she saw Don. Okay. That whole day was when Anne was trying to contact him and she couldn't get in touch with him. And then the next morning is when she called Carol and was like, hey, what is going on? Like, Don's not responding. And okay. Then, so you're talking about like the 19th then? The no, ni- yes. So it was, the, it was the 19th. Okay. She went and filed a mystery per- person's report. So now Anne is like, what is going on? And then she goes, oh my God, that envelope that he gave me. Shit. Okay. She goes and opens up the envelope and she sees a copy of the restraining order that he filed, the one that he was denied a month and a half earlier in June. She was like, oh my and God. And a will, like, right? See, no, here's the thing. The will wasn't in the envelope. It was, oh, okay. the co- it was a copy of the restraining order. Now, okay. here's where... It- Still gets weird. Okay. Kenny and Carol broke into the office. Yes, yes. To get documents, they and wanted Kenny to get. Says that in the in the docu series. Yeah. Oh, he, like he made it seem like it was just a natural thing that he did. He didn't just walk in. He actually broke a padlock on the main gate. Then had to break in to the doors that were locked. Right. So he broke two locks. Then he had to break another lock to get to where the will was. So he broke three locks. And the way he explained it was the just thing. like it was casual. Like it was just another day in the neighbor fucking hood, you know, like. But if weird. this is your husband, why do you need to break in? Yeah. If you exactly. have if there's paperwork your and your and your husband's missing, why do you need to break into something? Why couldn't you just roll up in the office like I need yo, I need to get this paperwork? Exactly. So and now that's why they, when the cops came, they're like, no, we can do it. Yeah. Now they have this power of attorney and the power of attorney is listing Carol as the power of attorney in the event of something happening to Don, including a disappearance. It Which literally is very s- weird. A power of attorney never says those words. His lawyer says it. Everybody no. says it. A power of attorney has nothing to do with disappearance. But this power <laughs> of attorney specified in the event of something happening to me, including a disappearance. Anne McQueen was supposed to be the executor, correct? Well, Not, she uh, she was the executor at one point, but that was an old will. 
Yes, yes. Carol That's was the one named... that Carol took, though, right? Carol went into when she broke into the office and she took the two wills. Those are the wills that she didn't want, right? And those are the ones. One was um, they were. I think both of them were old, right? I know that Anne was listed on his life insurance policy, but that was something separate because that yeah, didn't no, come that was, until that five years later. Separate. But I thought the two wills, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, the two wills were. She, Anne was the executor. Anne says that she was the executor yes. on the one of the wills, but. Uh, it was an old. It apparently was an old will. Now he okay. now Carol's his wife, so I don't know where where exactly all of that comes where, into yeah. play. But maybe that's why she took them. Maybe that's why. Right. She but now she now she them. has the power of attorney and she has control over all uh, over the assets to a certain extent. Now exactly. because he's certain only extent. he's Keyword. he's only missing, she has to petition the court, and she did several times to petition the court to use money to take care of the cats and things like that. Like yeah. why not? I think the first one was like a hundred and something thousand. They allowed yeah, thousand. certain certain uh, things like yes. uh, their joint things. They were they allowed like money to to exactly take care of the cats, and that was right. it. But uh, what what I find funny now is through the digging. Now there's. The documents are literally endless with this. If you dig, you can find all of the court papers. You can find the power of attorney papers. You can find the will. You can find all the filings on properties and things like that. If you look at the power, uh, the power of attorney, it is notarized. This is this is pretty fucking gnarly, right? So it literally says this: This durable family power of attorney shall not be affected by any disability or disappearance of the principal, except as provided by statute, and shall be exercisable from this date. Okay. Okay. It lists Carol Baskin mm -hmm. to appoint as the attorney, in fact, to manage the affairs. Now, when you get to the end of it on the third page, it's this notarized. Is, this, is funny. this is funny. Okay. The um, power of attorney is notarized by a woman named Sandra Whitcop. And Sandra Whitcop is listed in several places as being a housekeeper. Yeah, an employee. Yeah. An employee slash volunteer at Big Cat Rescue. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is. You don't think that's weird? You don't think yeah. that's weird? Of all the freaking, like, now they can sit there and be like, well, duh, of course we're going to use a notary that's already here. But wouldn't you, just to make sure that there's no conflict of interest or anything like that, wouldn't you use a notary that has nothing to do with any of the situation? Yeah. She just didn't give a fuck because she knew that she no, could or was No, or was this, was this power of attorney forged and drafted without after the fact? Without a was doubt. Was it drafted after the fact and backdated by someone without that you know? Yep, without a doubt. Without a fucking doubt. I really, because if you look at the signatures, they just look a little funny. I'm sorry. They don't. The L on Don Lewis's signature looks very feminine. So this document being notarized by someone close to them is is the first in a series of documents that are either witnessed or notarized by people very close to Carol and to Big Cat Rescue, which is what the wildlife on Easy Street turns into after yes. Don right passes. After right after. Well, dies. I'm AKA. sorry. A disappears. Right. Keyword. Because a lot of things change after he disappeared. A lot of things changed. See, yeah. Oh, this person started working here, like her mother, her father, her family members. They, they've they been working here since 97. They've been working here since 97. All coincidences that all these people just started working in 97. Right. All these new things that you changed, you know, we don't any longer breed cubs since 1997. You know, like everything when he disappeared changed. Yeah. We have these documents. Now this is going on. So... Now we're back to the in the days after Don disappears. His van is found at an airport about 40 miles away from the house. Literally a very small rural airport. Like Which one of those. It's like, not even the closest one. Right? It's not even the closest one. There's and it's like, it's like closer. It's literally like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And his van is kind of found there parked in between like the road and where the small prop planes are lined up. Yeah. And they find in the van. The his, keys. The keys to the van and his briefcase. No trace of Don. No, nothing. And like, I, I yeah. don't know if the, I mean, of course, this is like before DNA testing. Of I don't course. know. If, well, I, they, well I they take the van and they put it at another location. I don't know where, but not at a police location where it's not going to be touched. They put it at some other location and it sits there for days before right. they go and fingerprint it. Before they go and fingerprint it. And then I think they return the van to yes. Yes. Carol. Yeah, they did. They returned it to Carol and Carol owned it for years after that. But what's yeah. funny is when they did fingerprint it, the only fingerprints that came back in the whole entire van. Now, many people have used this van that work at um, Easy Street before it was, you know, um, BCR. All these people use this van because it's literally like the only van that they, you know, vehicle that they had, right, that they used for like transporting and stuff like that. The only fingerprints that they find, they don't find Don's, they don't find Carol's, they don't find Kenny's, they find the mechanics and they only find it in the back 
of the van. So, of course, the mechanic's like, yeah, I was working on it a couple of days ago. But hold up. They didn't think it was weird that you didn't even find Don's fingerprints yeah. in the van. Like, are you fucking kidding me? If you go check our cars right now, our fingerprints will be every fucking where. Right. I don't care even if it's the day after. I mean, a second after I got it fucking completely detailed you're still going to find fingerprints that's right. weird so Very no matter weird. how you spin it this looks staged whether yeah. it was don staging it to look like he kind of was disappearing or someone staging it to look like don the carol fucking basket <laughs> <laughs> yeah someone staging it to look like don was you know, on his way to Costa Rica, maybe a freak accident happened or something weird. Either way, it was very fishy and the cops go into a full investigation. They actually um, head over to Costa Rica. Now they're looking at all the possibilities. This property that he owned. Carol uh, hires a private investigator well, too, remember? Listen, here's the thing. Let's <laughs> let's back up for what a second. What does that sound like? What does that sound like? Remember what we were saying? It sounds a little bit of Courtney Love to me, baby. She took a page out of Courtney Love's book, but I don't think she took that page. And you want to know why? Courtney made the big mistake of hiring the most badass Hell yeah. private investigator. <laughs> Unbeknownst to her, this guy fucking was going to fucking almost ruin her life. And I Seriously. believe he still will. Oh, let's, yeah. ba- let's go back to Carol. That's though. a whole other fucking podcast. Carol says that we she wanted used to do that some podcast, of the money. And we can't now. We are going to do. Well, we will. We will. We're going to do Kurt Cobain, but we have to do that when we're together. Yeah, we can't do that. We have to do that after we're together. We have to do that together. But anyways, go ahead. (laughs) So part of the money that Carol got from this, she says she used to hire a private investigator. Who? Who is this private investigator? What's their name? Where do they work out of? What did they find? Nothing. nothing. That you, there's not even a name. So listen, if if you're hiring a private inge- investigator, there's nothing wrong with saying who they are. Yeah, why not? There's literally no – no one knows who this private investigator is. No one knows anything about them. They've never come forward. They've never even come up with tw- – how many years later? 20 exactly. years later? People are like, oh, and- it was this person. No, that wasn't. There's one person they list, and it was actually a cop that they listed that was a detective on the case. They were like, oh, this is the private detective. No, it wasn't. That was right. a cop. And there's so a again, documentation that says it, and it's, it wasn't him. That's a cop. That They went out to Costa Rica. Because they're like, oh, we we saw Don walking around fucking Costa Rica. <laughs> right. And it was bullshit. Well, they looked into that whole like Costa yeah. Rican mafia thing. I mean, that's probably going to be literally impossible to find oh, because God, yeah. you don't have any names to go by. He didn't have any contacts out there. Well, as of very recently, now this case has been reopened because of this documentary. And the sheriff was saying that they did find out that apparently he had young girls now, when he says young, we don't know if they're underage, but he says young girls, young enough for their parents to be up in arms about wait who, who him meeting on? Don Say that what? he was that yeah he was going out there to meet women. Now Carol knew and she suspected that he was going she out was there to meet women girls, but apparently he was meeting young girls that we don't know if they were oh, underage or if they were just young like of age but like 18 19 or something or if they were actually yeah. underage Why would you but the, sh- the sheriff put out a statement and there's an actual no shit, I didn't press conference where he has said this here. they're looking into it now but they can't speculate anything on it they said and young. they they okay. believe that it could be underage but they they can't confirm because they can't speculate but it is being it was confirmed that no he was shit. meeting with young women whose parents are now angry at, yeah you know what i mean that um well think about it when he met carol carol was like 20 what 21 years younger than him she was 22 years younger than him about, yeah. That's crazy. At the time that they met, yeah. But so, I mean, we're not sitting here. I mean, Don being missing is fucked up and all that. We're not sitting here saying this guy's Saint No, Don. but if you're going to research something, you have to research have to every research single everything. side of it. What yes. are the other possibilities? We do know that they were kind of like loan sharks and there was foreclosures is, going on with their property. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. They were hurting a lot of people and there could have been reason for other people to not be happy with Don, maybe yes. to the point of not wanting him around anymore. I don't know if they would have been able to orchestrate it or if the coincidental timing of, you know, yeah. him wanting to leave Cal- Carol and the I don't know if that all kind of that adds could up all either. be a coincidence but at the same time it's a little too much of a coincidence too much yeah but we have to put it out there this was all yeah. come out to light recently you gotta that- look at every aspect every aspect yeah. of it because he did fuck over a lot of people a yeah. lot and I'm not talking powerful people I'm talking some people that they have nothing to lose when you took their houses from them you know right. what I mean like that's exactly what he would do he would buy people's foreclosed houses and let them live in it but charge them a crazy interest rate you know right. and and then he'd fuck them over He'd go and take a mortgage out on the house. And these people are thinking, oh, man, I'm buying back my house. No. Mm -mm. Right. 
So you never know, man. You never know. I so doubt it. I don't know it. if they looked into that, but I do know that they looked into Costa Rica and nothing came up. And I mean, yeah. they tried. Yeah. And that says a lot because in the 90s, I mean, I don't even know if they would do that now. So I went missing. No. Go as hard as they did in another country like that. But nothing ever turned up in Costa Rica. They checked every manifest of every flight that went in and out of that airport. He had two passports. Neither of them were used entering or exiting the country or anything like that. And McQueen has has stated that when Don would fly to Costa Rica, he always flew commercial. She said only one time he flew privately and she named who the pilot was. But Carol says no. He was flying himself. She said he would fly under the radar. That's he what didn't Carol care. said. She, That's he what Carol even said. Put, uh, gas cans, she said, on the fucking wings. Yeah. Okay, and, Carol. I mean, this is coming from Carol. But at the right. same time, this guy did crash his fucking plane three yeah. times. Yeah, he did you lose know? his pilot's license. So, so, who, but, so who knows? But uh, who knows? And would Anne come forward because the rumors were that she was helping him funnel money for months? Yeah. And there was supposedly a, a $200,000 cashier's check that was taken out of one of his accounts and put into a, a, a safety deposit box. And when the cops went to investigate, the money was no longer in the safety deposit box. No so, shit. you know, did he take... Take the, out that cash or to did Anne McQueen. set himself up. Were they in cahoots? Was she helping him? But look, all these years later, she's still here. Yeah, and he's still missing. Exactly. So those she kind have of disappeared. She those are kind of the too. gaps that are going to have to get filled out as the investigation goes along, or something. Because I really couldn't put two and two together. I couldn't figure out what was real or what was not. Or I mean, there's also the possibility that he made his way out there. And sold those properties real quick and made yeah made some a little bit of money bank. and, and this set is himself prior to nine eleven so he could have got right. a fake ID fake Anything. this fake that or he could have got killed out in Costa Rica it's that he could have got killed or he could be living a completely new life to with a day, new laughing, a laughing new identity and everything because it probably would be very easy to get that oh, in nineteen ninety seven yeah, back then yes and he's he literally watched Tiger King and is laughing at it like fuck could you be. bitches. Could but be, I don't but know, dude. I, I don't, don't think know. so. I don't but think my so. gut is telling me that he's not alive anymore, and his family believes that now too. Yes. His family believes that he's no longer alive anyway. And and that bitch Carol Baskin killed they, him. Yeah, they believe she knows what happened, or she played a part in what happened yeah. to him. Yeah. Um. And this is all alleged. Alleged. <laughs> all alleged. Allegedly. <laughs> Rumors are starting to swirl. They're saying that she had something to do with it. They're even going as far as to saying that she took his body and threw it into a meat grinder that was supposedly on their property and yeah. fed him to the tigers. This is the this is the famous theory that Joe made his music video about where he yes. had someone dress up Best like Carol and ever. Yeah. Ever. And the dress up like Carol and was feeding um ground meat and, to the tigers in the video. And it's she sick. says that it's too small. The the grinder is too small because that's not the same grinder, bitch. It's yeah. not. She, it's not. In the Tiger King documentary, she says, there's no way I would be able to fit a body in that small meat grinder. I don't even know if I could fit somebody's hand in there. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Like, uh, what? <laughs> but according to Kenny's ex-wife and according to Don's family, there was an industrial-sized meat grinder on that property. And it was only about a month after Don went missing that Carol purchased a, a very – a brand new, very large flatbed-type truck what else would you need a flatbed and she gave it to kenny right she gave it she bought it for kenny yeah why would she why would she buy it for kenny and then also we forgot she put two properties in kenny's name right she, put, she can't, she she can't put, give him money right she tra two tr two properties were transferred into kenny's name one after don later. went missing and yep. she purchased a very large brand new flatbed truck that they're thinking and their theory is that it was used to transport the industrial size meat grinder out of her house. um yep. out of her house to sell it somewhere yes Don's family begged the police to get this meat grinder DNA tested, and they just said that they didn't have – The search warrant for it. They didn't have the probability. They didn't have the probability that they would be granted a search warrant for it because at the time, Carol was quote-unquote co cooperating even though she was the only one that would not agree to a lie detector test. And yeah. to this day, even years later, they approached her again, and she they said she respectfully declined. She was advised – by her lawyers to cooperate, but to, that she would not be participating yep. in a lie and his, his daughters, his ex-wife, they all did. Uh, they all did it. But they all it. submitted DNA yep. samples too, so that if his if, if remains ever come up in the future, that they can be compared in database to yes. their DNA. Because they have his dental records. They have everything. So, oh, yeah. so if anything ever if they find up, him, believe you me, they'll be able to see that it's him. But yeah, right when right after he disappeared, within a month, Carol goes. And like my cousin said, bought the flatbed for Kenny, right? Which we think 
that that transported the meat grinder. Then she also gave him property in Florida, in Tampa, Florida. Right. Which is weird. Why? Because what we this is what we think why she gave it to him was very simple. She couldn't give him actual money because everything was kind of frozen in a sense because she cannot get those assets until Don is declared dead. And in the state of Florida, years. that takes five years. And wouldn't yes. you know it, five years in, in one, one day, day bitch. <laughs> she, she, as dead. <laughs> she went and declared him dead and got those death certificates so that she could get the rest of his money and collect on his life insurance. Yep. And Don, and for all he was worth, which there's a lot of discrepancy. A yeah, lot of people a lot say of maybe he was worth $20 million. Some people say he was she worth says more. Six. That's what she, she says. She says six. Yeah. Either way, his family, his whole family, meaning his kids and everything – they only got about less than 10% of that. Yep, that's crazy. It's fucking Which is, nuts. is just absolutely but insane. But so the thing is, so she can't pay. Well, I don't know why she has to pay Kenny, but she can't pay him. So she gives him property because she, she's allowed to sell, you know, sign over those properties to him. Why? Why would she do that? Why would she sign over? And Kenny sits there and says that, nope, when Don disappeared, that was it. She got rid of everybody. But yet what he doesn't say is she didn't get rid of me, motherfucker. But she, not only did she keep me around... But the last day she sees him, he she gives me a shitload of Don's stuff. Right. And then a month after he's missing, she gives me properties. Right. And a fucking brand new flatbed. And Why? all of this, if you want to see uh, uh, the interview with Kenny's ex-wife, it's on YouTube. And the user's name is Ripper Jack Gaming. And he does a two-part interview with Patricia, which is Kenny's ex-wife. And she lays it all out, how Carol gave him the guns bef the day before Don went missing. Now, in Carol's rebuttal to the Netflix series, she, she I mean, this woman loves blogging. Oh, she yeah. loves putting out statements. She loves putting out her videos. She sure made she this, does. she went on this. I'm not, I couldn't even That she edited read like, it all. multiple times. She literally edited multiple and times. And edited, several times edited over response to the, the Netflix series. Basically, in them she says that she gave kenny the guns after don went missing because that was his right hand man and they were close and bullshit don would have wanted him to have it or whatever no she gave kenny the guns before and some people are saying that she gave him the guns before it was a form of payment it was so that yes. he could use it to kill don or so that she couldn't blame or so that she couldn't be blamed on using those guns to kill don yes oh i didn't have them i gave them away but she exactly. says flat out she gave kenny the guns after don disappeared after the fact because that's his best friend and in this and interview in this it. interview with so then, um with trish she says hands down those guns were brought in by kenny don's guns were brought in the day before he went missing on yeah. the 17th sunday and she like i mean okay yeah she could be lying too they why all, all these lying. years make, later you know, she has nothing Carol, to do with kenny anymore well, why her yeah exactly and you know what's funny though she actually did this interview before Tucker King came out, she did a hmm. um, a blog interview with um, remember the oh, one yes, I sent yes, you? Yes, 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 yeah. I, I sent you a uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, she did this years before Tiger King came out, before there was even talk of the Tiger King. So if she, you know, why would she do that? Why, you know what I mean? There's there's no hubbub about it. So I could see now, you know, wanting to get on the fucking money. I don't know how train, much money you know? she's even getting on it. She's and just doing. In. She's just doing interviews. This Jack, exactly no. This Ripper Jack Gaming no, uh, yeah, guy. Exactly. He, I mean, That's what I don't I'm saying. think he was paying her. He she was literally just putting the information out there. No, she just uh -uh. says she's sick of the lies. She's tired of the for lies. The people, and she just wants to yes. start telling the truth. No, for the people that are sitting there saying, "Oh, she's doing this for money." That that's my rebuttal. Is no dumbasses. There's no way right. for the simple fact one, she's not getting paid. Two, she was doing this before right. the hype of Tiger King. She was trying to get this information out and no one gave a fuck. And then people started giving a fuck because now this huge fucking docuseries came out. So now they're paying attention. I mean, to if her. anything, I exactly would be I would saying. be worried if like, you know, I was if her. It, I mean, she has nothing to do. Kenny has had some run-ins right? with the law, but I mean, he's Hell pretty yeah. much stayed quiet since this series came out. And she, they had a kid together, and their daughter is grown now. They, she's like twenty-six years old, and she has her own kid, and they have nothing to do with Kenny, according to Trish. I don't know this; I can't say for sure, but according to Trish, yeah, the daughter and the granddaughter the grandchild or whatever have nothing to do with Kenny. So why would she want to be on Kenny's radar now coming out with this? Like it just doesn't make sense. So I, I kind of do exactly. believe what after she's all saying. these years, yeah. you know what I mean? That's why I, yeah. I believe her. No, I do. I do. I truly honestly do because it's not like she's sitting out there and she's on fucking the news and all this. She's doing stations that, you know, she's, she's doing YouTube and you know what I mean? If, if she was about the money, she'd be like, Nope, I'm not talking to anybody unless I get this and this yeah. and that. How many people do that shit? How many people sit there and say, oh, I'm not doing an interview until I get paid $100 million yeah. or like whatever it is, you know? 
That's not, she's just getting the information out there to anybody and everyone that will listen. And her story has not changed once. From years ago right. when she posted that Unlike shit. Unlike Carol, who's, to some whose story changes so many times. That. Even the fact of her statements oh, yeah. are being edited. Listen, the internet is forever. Yes. She has to edit them shits because she has no idea. But when idea. you put something out there, <laughs> that's a wrap. Someone will screenshot it. There yep. are ways to even see like yep. the cache of the, the, the page. Sure. You can see previous versions of a website. Listen, you're not going to get by these internet yep. sleuths. They're going to find that shit, okay? Hell no, dude. They're fucking gangsters. They're better than detectives. All these pieces, whatever this is, and this case went cold, obviously, because it's been like 20 years. And the only reason why it's being reopened now is because of all the hype of the documentary on Netflix, which is great because the answers are here. The pieces for this to be solved are like right there on the tip of their fingertips. Yeah, they just have to be able definitely. to put it together properly. I mean, the answers are there. They may not get the DNA that they want. They may not, you know, they don't have the meat grinder. They don't, they might not have the smoking gun, but there could be enough to figure this out. Yeah. There was even rumors that like she put Dawn in like the septic system of yeah, the property or whatever. I don't believe she's that. She's always, I don't believe that either. She wouldn't be that stupid. And she's even said, no. hey, if anyone wants to pay to replace it, come on over and dig it up. So listen, which I don't know. Honestly, if I came to her and said, hey, I'm going to replace it, I guarantee you she wouldn't let it happen. I guarantee you. But one thing that I did find was last night, I kind of went into the rabbit hole. I was working <laughs> overnight. I work at a hospital. I was working overnight. And um, on my downtime, I just kind of like surfed the internet a little bit. And I found a document that was dated. I don't know how you found this. I don't even know how, dude. I'm telling you this, this, this right here, my mouth, I was literally like, Holy shit, dude. Well, let me just give a little preface. So after, you know, and Don after Don goes missing, she makes big changes to the the cat sanctuary. It now becomes big cat rescue. She makes all the changes. She fires everybody except Kenny and she hires all new staff and she's going in a completely different direction. She's got all this money now and she meets a man named Howard Baskin, who becomes her third, possibly fourth husband. We're not sure possibly. about that first one still. So no she idea. ends up marrying Howard. I don't know how long they dated before they got married, but I think she either says way. O2, but who knows? Oh, two, they got married. Either way, four, I would. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, but okay. So she was obviously dating other people in between or at the same time as Howard because dated June 12th of 2002. Okay. A man named <laughs> Jay. But Baikal, I don't know how to say that, but here's a, a another petition for an order of protection in the county of Hillsborough in Florida. And this restraining order petition, I don't know if this was granted or not either. Like we know Don's was denied. This one, I'm not sure if it was granted, but here, here it is stamped by the court and everything. It says, on the phone and at home, she told me she will kick my ass out of there, whatever it takes. I honestly fear I am in danger of death or serious bodily injury because her prior husband is missing and presumed dead. One day she said to me when I asked her, what happens if your husband shows up now? Her response was, dead bodies cannot talk. That's insane. Her former husband's daughter told me she would be dangerous and to watch out, watch my back. The printing on this is atrocious. The respondent carries two guns loaded always, one in her truck and one in her residence. She said she was a suspect Which we know that in her for husband's sure. she disappearance. Said that. She said that. Yes. Um, she was a, a suspect in her husband's disappearance, which she was considered a person of interest, but never an actual suspect. But she was a person of interest, yeah. but they never found anything, obviously. Um, recently, mm -hmm. in parentheses, three to four days ago, she told me human bones were found near Lazy Days RV Center, which is very close to where the animal rest, the, the big cat rescue was. She yeah, said she hopes it's not a couple times. Hot, the Lazy Day River. She told me human bones were found near Lazy Day's RV Center. She said she hopes it's not on her property or she will be in deep shit. <laughs> so this is this is this man's who supposedly is someone that she was dating. And this was 2002. So this was not even a year after she had Don declared legally dead. Yeah. And this is a even though he was report. And this is this yeah. isn't, you well, know, this is not bullshit. This is the actual fucking police report. It's a yeah, it's a petition for an order of protection. So I don't like yeah. again, I don't know if this was actually a granted, was granted to him or because not. Yeah. We know that Don's wasn't, but it was filled out. And this was a man that she was apparently dating. And if the numbers add up, she would have at least been with Howard at this point. No, she I don't was. Know if she was remember when we were looking at it and seeing like she says on the docuseries that she met Howard in 02. That's what she says. And they married in 04. Yeah. 
So we, and she's known in the past to date multiple men at once, uh, unless she broke up with this guy. And then a couple of days, you know, months later, it all happened within the same year. You know what I mean? So, yeah, who knows? But she's has been known as, you know, being a little bit of a whore. So. Yeah, dude, I don't know. This whole story <laughs> is so freaking crazy. And even though he was declared dead five years after he went missing, this is still considered a endangered missing persons case. An active case. So, yeah. They actually just recently, um, Sheriff Chad Cronister is the current sheriff that is on this case, and he's been posting a lot of stuff. He's been County. He gets about six tips a day. So somebody actually yeah. in that group that I'm in, they said that they contacted him about they felt how it was suspicious that Kenny was being quiet and that they should look into that and question him about certain things. And um, he responded to them and says, I'm, I'm going to look into that. Right. So he is very active in it. And he actually gives a phone number. If, That's awesome. Yeah. If you have any information, you can call the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office with any leads. The number is 813-247-8200. And it literally says only you can help solve the Jack Don Lewis. They want people to kind of come forward with stuff because like i said the information is there yeah it's just about piecing it together and honestly i think what it's going to come down to is who's going to rat somebody knows that's something. What I was about to say somebody has to snitch some and, and that's that will get it to the finish line yeah yes all someone has to say is i want the protection i have the information protect me and here it is it like someone's going to come forward it would have to be kenny you think so what about ann do you think that she mm. has any information that maybe she's been holding back or maybe she just doesn't think that it's valuable or that it it could play I, yeah, any that's part a possibility. in it? Yeah, that's a big possibility. Like, I don't think she knows anything big unless she knows that Don faked his death, which we, well, I really don't think Well, there's also so. a lot of talks that Carol and Kenny were, had something going on that yeah. they were having an affair, which yeah, I think given so. her history, I really wouldn't put it past her. Yep. Um. And given how quiet he's been, I don't really know what he thinks about all this because he really hasn't said. So maybe he really didn't have anything going on with Carol. Maybe he really doesn't know. Maybe she was the mastermind or maybe something completely different was happening. Either way. Um, I don't know, though. Why would she give him that property and the flatbed yeah. and all that? You that know never what I made mean? any sense. That and really never made any say sense. Why? Like she hasn't. She's rebuttaled everything except that. Yeah. Except all. Not not only did she give the property in September, but she gave property years later too. Uh, the the year that he was declared dead in O two, she gave him another uh, piece of property. So she's rebuttaled everything. Why not rebuttal that and say what's the reason that you gave Kenny these properties? Yeah, you know, and he hasn't said it. And then he even lied and said that she fired him. Like you didn't think that? Do you know what I mean? Like I don't know. It just doesn't. It, it doesn't sit right. Something's yeah. not right. Something's not right between that relationship of Kenny and, and Carol. You know, could it just be Carol and her brother and her dad and mom? There's a very good possibility. But I just feel like Kenny has – he knows more. Right, because they had he, connections. He like I said, the father had had worked for multiple governors, right? The the brother was a sheriff in military the same background county. background to his father. Right. Father the, and, the military background, working for governors, the brother being a sheriff in the town or working for the sheriff's office. Like, so the yep. connections were there to where they could have been like, listen, let's just back off of this. Yep. Let's just leave this. Let's leave and this I one really, alone, boys. I really feel like it, it was that. Yeah. It was that for sure. I really do like the brother was a sheriff in that fucking yeah. county. And she claims she's not close with her brother at all. She's like, oh, Please. we're seven years apart. Like, you know, we we have nothing in common. Like, I think that's also like her Bullshit. idea of like playing it off. Like, oh, we're not even close. So like his daughter like actually works on a big cat rescue. She she works in the sanctuary. Yeah. So well, how are you not close with your brother if you're if his daughter works there with her daughter? Yeah. Like Jamie and, also and, works you know there. I mean? like, Carol Carol's yeah. daughter also works there now too. So Yep. I don't so know. come on. I don't believe that at all. She says because she, there's so much uh years in difference. There's seven years apart. So much years in difference. Pure bullshit. It doesn't pure mean bullshit. anything. I think it's her kind of trying to play it off like, oh, don't yes. even look into my brother. We're not even close. Yep. He wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't cover up for me. But these these people have their family signatures all over like property documents and things. They are fiercely protective of each other. So Yes. Yep. And she seems to keep everybody close. Just close oh, enough. Yeah. You yep. know, um, except Just for Kenny. Like He's not in the picture. I know the only thing I know about Kenny now is that he doesn't not work for Big Cat Rescue anymore and he has nothing to do yep. with, with that organization anymore. The um oh, and as far as uh her ex husband Mike Murdoch, I did find out because 
there is this weird theory that oh my God, Mike yeah. Murdoch is actually the man who now took over um, Joe's Joe Exotics. Uh, oh, Jeff zoo. Lowe. Jeff Lowe. Yeah, yeah. This guy, Jeff Lowe, who's <laughs> absolutely crazy. Listen, if you didn't watch the documentary, we cannot explain these people to you. So the no. names don't mean anything to you if you didn't watch it. I would suggest watching it. There is a man named Jeff Lowe who now runs um, Joe Exotics Zoo while Joe is incarcerated. And this man he does his, look like Mike Murdoch, dude. He but looks he's not exactly. Him. It is not him. It is not it, him it's creepy. It's fucking creepy. Unfortunately, we found out that Mike Murdoch passed away in 2010. So it's not him. Yeah. And the age difference wouldn't have been there. Like Mike Murdoch is probably like 20 years older than Jeff Lowe. But the, if you want to look, the, the memes are there. Oh, I mean, it's, great. it's, oh, it's uncanny. Great. They could, they totally could be related. But um, oh, it sure. is a coincidence. Definitely. Definitely. I suggest checking all of this out for yourself. I, I mean, listen, we're quarantined right now. What else do you have better to do? Definitely. You know? Um, I honestly, I really didn't think I was going to like Tiger King, but it is every aspect uh, from from true crime to comedy to uh, reality, you know, like, yeah, like that reality that TV. Just, that's like the train wreck that you you yes, you're like, you why am I watching look, it? But I can't stop. <laughs> yes. You can't look away. <laughs> it is literally the train wreck that you can't look away from. I mean, I cannot recommend it to enough because it is just fucking nuts. There's no more to explain to it. Uh, we did our whole podcast, not off of Tiger King, but more off of Don Lewis. But right. you got to watch it just to kind of see what we're, we're talking about, because you do get a perspective of who Carol Baskin is and then go do your own digging and make your own assumption. But this is from what we've gathered because right. there is probably so no, not probably there is there is so much more shit out there that we don't even know, because you have to understand this happened in the time when there was barely computers out there. You well, know? information's information is popping up right now, literally yeah, on the right. daily. That yes. th that restraining order from the the man that she dated after Don, I literally found last night or three this morning at like three a.m. <laughs> so this information is still being put out there by the internet sleuths and. Netflix it did announce that they are going to actually be adding an episode. Damn, I'm not dude. sure when. Definitely soon, but they're adding an episode to this series based off of, I guess, additional footage that they have that they didn't use. So oh, yeah, I don't know what it's going to be geared towards. Years, dude. Think about yes, it. They had five, five years, of years shit. to film this, and there's so much more shit that they also investigation discovery announced that they are going to be doing a special on the Don Lewis disappearance. So oh, I'm no sure way. that that's no yeah, shit. I didn't know that they're getting involved. I mean, this case I believe can be solved. Yeah, if the right people come forward and if they just put the information if they piece it together properly yeah yep definitely if they put the pieces it's all of the there together it'll get there so, all right guys yeah this is our first quarantined episode hopefully you guys like it i mean it's the quality may not be as well as the other ones because we are using something that's new yeah our first remote episode so we actually uh i'm gonna try to edit this and get it up tonight and we're actually gonna try to record another yeah. episode i don't know how often we should put it out while we're quarantined should we put out like one a week while we're quarantined hey we'll try to do whatever we can dude i, I mean, mean now that, that we have awesome. this is so easy this is yeah. so easy to do this like this so. it really is i i really think that we could try to do at least once a week yeah i i think i think that would be fun Hit us up on Instagram at Abnormal Exchange if you have any suggestions on our quarantine topics. Yeah. Just throw some shit out there, man, because there's always stories out there that some people have never heard about, and we love doing research. Yeah. Definitely uh, send us your best ones on Twitter, Insta, Facebook, wherever. Just send us shit. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Peace. Bye.